My number, number one tip is that when you have people over, whether it's a lot of people or just a handful of people, I think it always feels very special when there's one quote unquote signature cocktail. Welcome to Didn't I Just Feed You, a podcast about feeding kids. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Stacy. Hey guys, before we jump into today's conversation, we want to take a second to tell you that you should join our community. Oh and my if God, you do, song. I'll never sing for you again because <laughs> I have the worst voice. <laughs> hey guys, for real though, it's free. It's easy. You share your email with us. You don't share it with anybody else. Neither do we. Join us. It's the happiest place on the internet. We'll put a link in our show notes to make it easy for you to join, but you can also go to the community page on our site or Instagram where we are at Didn't I Just Feed You any old time to sign up. And hey, you know what we're going to say next if you're a longtime listener, but we just want to encourage you to consider joining our supporting membership as well. It's a place that we really, really love and work really hard to bring you extra value. We only want you to do it if it's comfortable for you to do so. But if you join us, you can pledge your support monthly or annually, whatever works better for you, and you'll receive awesome perks, including two bonus episodes every month, live events, lifetime access to a private Instagram feed, and a quarterly giveaway, which putting that thing together brings us so much joy. And we try to make it as expensive as possible. (laughs) We want to give you as much (laughs) stuff as possible. It makes us happy. Speaking of making us happy... We were going to talk about drinks. You know how we do um, running what we're cooking and eating now? We thought it would be fun slash funny and hopefully a little bit useful to talk about what we're drinking now for the holidays, festive cocktails and mocktails too. Um, Stacey, what, just off the top, what is the one drink you're drinking right now? You know, it's so... I'm going to name two. It's so boring. I go back to it all the time. A gold rush. Oh, yes. And then I have a holiday version of the gold rush, which either you made up or we made up together. I don't know. I give credit where credit's due. All I know is that I drink it all the time, but it's basically like the same components. So whiskey, honey, or sometimes I use simple syrup, lemon, Then I add apple cider and a tiny bit of all-spice dram to the holiday version. So it gives it a little bit of like apple-y spice yumminess. It's my favorite. Yes. What are you drinking right now? Okay. We are in a whiskey sour season. Ooh, yeah. Which a whiskey sour is just like whiskey, orange or lemon juice, and simple syrup. You can... Um, Shake it with an egg white, but you don't have to. And I've been trying to get Brian to make us New York sours, which is basically a whiskey sour, no egg white, topped with red wine. And he's like, I don't understand how a red wine could make whiskey any better. But it is good, right? It, like, adds a dryness and, like, a little bit more tartness to it. So I love it. Those are definitely on the menu for us right now. Can I ask a question? Of course. Do you egg white or do you not egg white for your sour? I think it just totally depends on the day. I like both. The thing about egg white cocktails is that they are, the egg white smooths everything. Yes, I love an egg white cocktail. So they're perhaps too easy to drink. (laughs) (laughs) So silky. Also, I just wanted to say that when we did our most recent live event for our listeners community we shared a recipe for a mistletoe kiss which is an egg white cocktail and one of the things that i learned in doing that because we like to make that drink we like to make the drink recipe we share um accessible is that you can sub two tablespoons of aqua faba which is the liquid in a can of chickpeas or from cooking chickpeas for one egg white so you can make almost any cocktail that's shaken with an egg white with aquafaba and make it vegan. I I know it's so good. So I was going to ask you that because I've heard of that, although I've never done it myself because I love an egg white cocktail, but I'm going to try it this holiday season. You should. It, it, It does work better if you shake it dry first, which means you shake it without the ice and then add the ice and shake it again. Like double shaking, even if the recipe doesn't call for it, um, does give you a stronger foam with the aquafaba. Okay. We're going to get into more drink ideas, but I want to talk very quickly 
about I we say that all the time. We're like, I know. Let's I talk like, quickly. Like, we're gonna be quick. We're gonna be quick, uh, guys. Everybody who listens is like, we are. We many know you're things, not quick. But quick is not it. <laughs> Bleep that out for the children listening. Although this one's all about alcohol. Yes. Actually, we should talk about mocktails too. No, so. I do want to. I have a whole little list. Great, of like great. festive kid drinks too. But let's give some top line tips for. Thinking about holiday drinking, whether it's setting up a bar just for yourself to give yourself a little treat, if it's setting up mocktails, or if you're entertaining, there are just a couple of things that we want to go over that we think will be really helpful. And I want to start with entertaining, (laughs) if that's okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really the the thing here, right? We're like all very much looking forward to having people in our homes, yeah. whether that's a bit large or small this season. Yeah. And so that's all, where I'm thinking too. Okay, good. I, I thought think, you might have some home bar tips because you're really into your home bar. I probably do if I think about it for a okay. minute. So kick us off with just entertaining cocktail okay. bar rules. My number, number one tip is that when you have people over, whether it's a lot of people or just a handful of people, I think it always feels very special when there's one quote unquote signature cocktail, which yes, basically means you love a signature cocktail. I love a signature <laughs> it's cocktail. Very cute. So I just feel like, like this is like the main drink that we're drinking tonight. It feels like you've given a lot of thought to your party. It might introduce people to something new. It also then allows you to keep the bar you set up really simple. So maybe your signature cocktail is made with whiskey and you have people who don't drink whiskey. They only drink vodka fine. The vodka is there, but your bar doesn't have to have tons of mixers and flavors and blah, blah, blah. It just has simple syrup, all the basics, soda water, tonic, lemons, limes, and then whatever else. Like if you want to add one or two other things, because the signature cocktail is the highlight. Also, that's a great cost saver too, because then you're not buying like I'm going to get sour mix and grenadine and bloody mirror. Like even beyond just having a couple different varieties of alcohol, like all those mixers really add up. So I love, it's a budget tip too. Totally. And I do feel like, you know, if someone likes a particular drink that, you know, requires more than soda water or tonic or some special garnish and they can't have that, but there's a signature cocktail, it feels intentional rather than lacking. Yes. Also, because it's a choice you made to have this cocktail and then simple help yourself to anything else. That's really easy. Also, everyone who I know who like they drink the one thing, they usually bring it. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> right? Like we have a family friend who like he just drinks whiskey neat and he has a couple of brands of whiskey that he loves. So he always, that's his hostess gift. He brings a bottle of whiskey he has his two whiskeys and he leaves the bottle Great. as a gift. So like, I like that he takes care of himself. Yes. Don't overthink or worry about that one person who's like expecting the thing. And I also think there's a great entertaining tip in here, which is something we both do, which is it's better to have a selection of like a signature cocktail and like one type of wine and maybe a beer than like trying to please everybody yes. with everything. It also creates overwhelm for your guests when they're like, well, I don't ooh, like, what do I drink? What's my go-to? And they don't want to be fussy. If you're bartending, like it's so much easier to just offer a couple of choices and then just make sure those are plentifully stocked. Can I also say something else that reveals too much about me? Yes, of course. That if you also set up like a full bar and you haven't hired someone to be a bartender, which is very likely the case. (laughs) I mean, there are parties where I've seen where someone will like hire one person to come in and tend bar, but that's like a fancy and elaborate. To to someone in the family, like you're going to make drinks, but then yeah, be that person. Right. But I also like that just having like soda water, tonic and booze and some like lemons and limes actually helps you manage the mess as well. (laughs) Yes. Right. I don't need everybody like pouring all kinds of juices and like spilling on my counter. Cocktails everywhere. (laughs) Yes. You want something fancy? I got it for you. You don't like that. You can just go mix your tequila and lime juice over there. Yes. Have your (laughs) vodka soda. Yes. It's very simple. Okay. So speaking of a signature cocktail, you're going to want to make a batch of it. Don't ice your batch cocktails. So mix everything together. 
then chill it in the fridge. And then you're going to have people pour it over ice or shake it over ice or whatever it is when it comes time to serve. Yes. And then you can just have an ice bucket on your bar. Totally. If you're going to do more than one cocktail that's already mixed, which I think is too much work, but if you're that person and you it makes you happy, go for it. Just label everything and make sure that the different cocktails are distinct and have like really different flavor profiles so that you can, you know, cover a bigger span of people. Also, if there are children at the party, really be mindful. I think this goes without saying you guys aren't idiots, but uh, it's just important <laughs> to say because I, you know, you never know. I don't know. Maybe this is a reflection of having a teenager and starting to get I anxious. I was going to say, this advice is mine from being a teenager. Oh! <laughs> making sure it's really clear which cocktail is alcoholic and which one is not. Yeah. Like making them different colors even. Yeah. So that the teens at your party are not drinking the adult cocktail. We could go not really, we could go ever. We could really this go down a rabbit hole. This is not quick. This I'm, is why we are not quick. I'm also like, and teenagers must drink out of clear cups. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so that you can see what color. No, but listen, like label everything, make things distinct, make it clear so that it's just really easy for your guests, yes. especially if they have kids that they know like where the kid drinks are versus, because you don't want to be on call is the thing too. You know, that feeling of like, is yeah, everything you clear? To enjoy your own party. Right. Like, is, yeah. is everything clear? Like, do people know where things are? That kind of being on call is not fun when you're entertaining. Not at all. I think at this point, it's pretty clear that every party should have one like low ABV or non-alcoholic at least option that isn't totally boring or an afterthought is yes. my opinion. There's so many great low ABV and non-alcoholic options. You know, you can go with something that's just a mocktail. We're going to talk through recipes or you can try something like a wine proxy. I do have a question about this that I'm kind of curious. Maybe we'll throw it to our listeners group. I find things like non-alcoholic gin and non-alcoholic whiskey and wine proxies, which are a wine-like drink that the acid lead makes. And we've mentioned the acid leak before because we like their dressings and their vinegars, but we also sent out a newsletter about their wine proxies because they're delicious and cool. I just also... I sometimes wonder if you're someone who's sober, I have this question about meat substitutes too. Okay. Like if you're someone who doesn't eat meat, do you want something that tastes like meat? Like if you're someone who is sober, do you want something that's like gin? I don't know. I think that would have to be answered by someone who is right. sober. <laughs> but we had a friend. that in such a funny way. Yeah. You're clearly not. No, I was actually going to say we had a friend in Boise who was in recovery and he still enjoyed like he would bring a like he would not drink kombucha on the regular, but he would like bring a kombucha to a celebration. So he had something that felt festive. And over the years of like getting product samples like the proxies, yeah. like um, Curious Elixirs, which they make like basically yep. a really nice non-alcoholic cocktail that comes in a cute bottle. And those are uh, very delicious, but you can add alcohol to them too. He, he really enjoyed those. Like that That's was interesting. Fun to him. I know someone who's in recovery who does not, who purposely yeah. of intentionally avoids the non-alcoholic spirits. Yes. So I would say that if you're just adding something for fun, I personally like low ABV cocktails because it just helps me be able to like sip on something longer. And, you know, yeah. I just don't need to like be drinking four full strength drinks anymore. Yes. Um, <laughs> Which you can make low. There are great recipes for intentionally yes, low totally. ABV. Like you have your signature, the Billis, which is like 50, 50 dry vermouth and sweet vermouth, That's right. which is low alcohol. I recently discovered, I love some of the alcohol alternatives in a cocktail. That's like, usually high proof like a negroni made with 
with non-alcoholic whiskey, but keep them removed. So it's like all the flavors of a classic cocktail without the heavy hit that of alcohol. That is a great use for it. Yes. So I was just going to say that if you have somebody who is sober in a very intentional way, maybe kind of checking in with them. I think that's great. A great, great tip to, you know, to figure out like yes. what kind of low ABV or non-alcoholic option that you should yeah. offer. Did you also mention that if you're going to be having like strong mixed cocktails, it's nice to start the dinner hour with like um, champagne or a low ABV cocktail. Yeah, I think that's great too. So, so everyone's not smashed everybody. by dessert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Help your guests pace themselves. So yeah, like when everybody walks in, have that low ABV or that like little flute of champagne and spend the first hour sipping on that and then pull out the bar. Yes. Yes. Okay. I think for the holidays, when it comes to holiday cocktails, don't be afraid of spice. So you can add spices to your simple syrups. If you're making something homemade, you can mull so many things. You can mull cider, you can mull wine, you can mull milk. I don't, they don't call it mold milk, but for example, like a cardamom turmeric milk is basically mold milk. So don't be afraid of spice. You can grate or sprinkle a little bit of spice on top, grating fresh nutmeg, a tiny dusting of cinnamon on top. You can use spices to rim a glass, mix cinnamon. I actually had an apple cider mimosa recently mm. and they rimmed the glass with cinnamon sugar. Yes. And use it as a garnish. But think about those holiday spices. We talked about it in our baking episodes. <laughs> they work here too. Cardamom, cinnamon, nutmeg, all those delicious Cayenne, things. Yeah. Uh, go savory too. Even with sweet drinks, it's such a nice compliment. Did you already say making simple syrups with spices? Because that's yes. one of my favorite like home bar things that makes your home bar feel fancy is like always having your own simple syrup on hand, but then making some flavored ones that are like signature. Brian loves a penicillin, which is a scotch drink that is made with ginger syrup. So like always having the ginger lemon syrup on hand means that we can have penicillins anytime we need them. Yes. And I think also making your own rimming sugar. So, you know, we talked about adding some spices. You could do cinnamon sugar. You can add a little bit of salt. You talked about cayenne, but also dehydrated fruit, pulsing it, and then mixing it with sugar is really, really fun. Like maybe you're going to make some sort of like, I don't know, like a pomegranate margarita. I just came up with that. That can feel very like holiday festive and then rim it with, I don't know, like strawberry there's, I've never seen freeze dried pomegranates. Have you? That'd be really good. No. But like you could use freeze dried strawberries and yeah. sugar and rim the top, and you, it has this beautiful red hue, and you add a little something. You could do mix it with salt too. Some of those, like pomegranate, I don't know if pomegranate is one you can find actually, but like beet, you can fa find powder, beet powder, yes. which is like dehydrated and already pulverized for you. And that could be really, like really beautiful, different color and add a ton of flavor to whatever you're making. Also, I want to shout out, no one's going to be surprised by this, sprinkles as an option for rimming. And Fancy sprinkles, prison powder, which is really fun to add to cocktails. You can add it to wine and make the wine feel even more festive, or you can add it to Sprite and serve that as like the kid's signature cocktail. Yes. It doesn't have to be this elaborate punch. It's literally like fruit juice or soda with sprinkles, prison powder I in it. I love that. And I think these things, your own rimming sugar, you know, a uh, homemade simple syrup, prism powder. You could also do a fun garnish if you're feeling a little bit more crafty. I, I've i never been able to make them look really good for some reason, but <laughs> sugared cranberries are yes. beautiful. But adding anything like that to your bar, especially if you're going to pre-make a signature cocktail and then have a super simple stripped down bar, just having like one or two little special things like that 
really makes it feel holiday-ish. Yes. Also, dried fruit for garnishing and things like cinnamon sticks for people to throw in their mold, their mug of mold wine just feels like so incredibly festive and your guests will feel so taken care of. I Wait, wanna... one more thing before okay. we get into before we get into drinks. Okay. If you don't want to make any of this stuff homemade, Again, go to your liquor store and talk to them about like special holiday bitters, drams. You know, I mentioned St. Elizabeth Allspice Dram is one of my favorites. That's the brand. There are other Allspice Drams. That one is very popular. But go and find out like what can give your bar a holiday flair and just buy it. (laughs) That works too. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Let's get into a classic, didn't I just feed you, rapid fire recipe ideas. Let's start with alcoholic drinks first. Okay. So you mentioned the Billis. We have a recipe on our site, equal parts sweet and dry vermouth with a lemon twist. So delicious, so easy. The perfect before dinner drink, if you ask me. We have pitcher pims. I think of this as more of a summer cocktail, but I think it's really fun to put a holiday twist on cocktails like Pim's Cup or margaritas that people might not expect, but that are a favorite. So it could be as simple as using that cinnamon stick or putting a tiny dash of that allspice dram. So just kind of play with it. The fun thing about <laughs> holiday drinks is if you're prepping a holiday drink for a party, you can experiment <laughs> yes. the weeks before by making cocktails Taste for test. yourself. I'll, also, I love the idea of dressing things up for the holidays, but I think Pims and margaritas are both two drinks that like they're so balanced in their like sweetness and acidity that they're really great with big holiday meals like a turkey, like a rib roast. So yes. like, you also don't, there's something cool about like we're just having margaritas uh, on Christmas that feels fun without having to be extra. I agree. Although, of course, I'm extra. So <laughs> I know I just always ways- have to be the one who's like, listen, you, you could just, just have a margarita. margaritas, especially Stacey's margarita, because and here's the funny thing. We think of margarita as a summer drink, but like citrus fruit is at its prime yes. right now. You're going to make the most epic margarita in the middle of December than you are going to make in the summer because you're going to have all this citrus fruit. And Stacy's signature has orange juice in it. And a dash of bitters. And a dash of bitters. That makes it so good. But there's a couple of ways that you can make it extra. One is to flavor the margarita, right? So I like off the cuff mentioned pomegranate. We found a recipe that looks so good called a white Christmas margarita punch. Okay, yes. We'll link to that. The other direction that you can go is if you keep the drink simple, but then you plan your whole menu around it. So one year I was really, I spent a lot of time cooking and learning about Puerto Rican food. And the kind of culmination of my year of culinary exploration was to make a Puerto Rican Christmas. So I had pernil and I had plantains, mashed plantains, like a whole bunch of stuff. And I served coquito as the drink. Yes. So maybe if you love margaritas, like do a little research, learn a little bit about how, you know, people in Mexico celebrate Christmas, what traditional foods and like plan a kind of different meal around that. I think that's super fun. I love that. I also love coquito. And if you've never had it before, it's like it has the same vibe as eggnog, but it's so much easier to drink. <laughs> So good. (laughs) Which I find a little bit uh, dangerous. What about eggnog? I I love eggnog. Love eggnog. And I'm a big proponent of like make your own eggnog, not by the carton at the store. Do you? I feel really surprised sometimes when I'm like, you could make it your own. You're like, "Uh, or we could just buy it. Oh, no. Store-bought eggnog, I actually don't love very much. Mm, I think there's some like local, like if you get a local dairy that makes eggnog, it can be awesome from the store. It can be, but they're just, even, even local, like if you're packaging eggnog, you just have to do things to it. Yeah, you have to, to make pasteurize it, it in a way to make it safe. Whereas at home, you don't have to. Uh, and technically, the alcohol does make it safe. So it's true, but it is so delicious, homemade. I think we're in the minority. 
I do think we are too. We'll have to get a poll going on yes. Instagram or something. Yeah. Um, speaking of creamy drinks, we drink so many white Russians in the winter. And I have a inkling that you could possibly make that into a pitcher cocktail too. You white Russians remind me of being in college. <laughs> I <laughs> I feel like I'll never drink we're a white be, Russian again. <laughs> I know. I it's the thing of you like you promised we were gonna be quick. Okay. But I now I tell like, you. <laughs> I, I'm sure it's just it's not a great story, but now I'm like, I wanna know. Oh so that's me and vanilla vodka. I will never oh. drink vanilla vodka <laughs> yes. again in my life. It, that's it. I mean, that's the story. It is like you and vanilla you vodka. I think people get it. it. I over consumed it. I think it felt like sweet and not i don't know oh man a white russian on christmas morning is like ah, chef kisses maybe being, i'll yeah. go back to it i like yeah. this christmas morning thing also because there's coffee like there's coffee liqueur involved in it but now i'm like maybe we should be spicing them up maybe we should be doing like a little bit of nutmeg on our white oh, russian yes, to should. make it even better or like we will sometimes do the basics <laughs> of a white russian but add eggnog instead of the half and half which it's is really delicious so gross to think about like a white russian on christmas morning is the perfect scenario sipping on one but like yes, the way i drink it you were like slamming <laughs> white russians which is just a whole other thing it's disgusting to think it about it's kind of gross and it reminds me of when we were prepping for this episode i was looking for like kids recipe i like kid <laughs> festive kid drinks instead of just mocktails which can be just like juices and stuff i was like what's fun for the kids and someone we won't name names here was like milk shooters <laughs> I wish everybody could see the video that we have going right now. Because you like threw something. Did a like, weird yeah. hand gesture. Like, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, let's teach our kids how to do shots. Which I just find wholeheartedly wrong. It was basically like milk and sprinkles. And I feel like there's just a, yes, milk and sprinkles. In theory, I love that idea. But there's such a cooler way that it could be done. And you the idea of teaching them how to do shots. Yeah. What about like. <laughs> Flavor like flavored milk, like you mentioned doing mold milk, making a golden milk or a gingerbread milk. You could do that and do like a in a mug with a sugared or sprinkled rim. And that would be so festive and so great. But you know what that is not? It's not shooting milk, <laughs> which sounds like a recipe for vomit. <laughs> Oh my God, it's so good. Okay. okay. Moving on. Let's stick with, like you said, mold. I want to talk about hot buttered rum. Yes. I always want to talk about hot buttered rum. Right? Any so opportunity. Hot toddies get all the glory, but hot buttered rum is great. We're going to, we actually found a hot coconut buttered rum recipe mm. that sounds yes. so good and is vegan that we're going to put on the site too. Yes. 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 I want to talk about. This recipe that I found, full disclosure, haven't tried it, but it's a grapefruit cardamom gin fizz. I have been in a gin phase, pretty much just uh, gin and tonics, but I love this idea. Going back to what you said about margaritas, it is citrus season. I'm a huge fan of grapefruit. I love, I love warm spices, all these things that we've been talking about. But also sometimes something that's just bright and acidic that just cuts through all the rich holiday food is exactly what you need. And just the idea of a little bit of cardamom to give that holiday flair, but in the context of something that's much brighter and that's also fizzy and cuts through all the fat sounds nearly perfect to me. Yeah. I want to drink that right now. Yes. A hundred percent. It also sort of reminds me of a salty dog, which is gin yes. and grapefruit juice. And then it gets like a rim like a margarita with salt, which is a really great winter cocktail as well. I love this idea of like a little glass of sunshine, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay, what else is on your list of 
classic cocktails. You mentioned a gold rush, which we both love, which is whiskey, lemon, ginger, um, usually sweetened with a little bit of honey or simple syrup. I don't put ginger in my gold rushes. Oh, you are missing out. I don't think that's the, I'm going to look it up. Okay. I think of that as like in the, you mentioned putting ginger syrup in a in pen, penicillin, penicillin, which for sure. Yeah. But, I think I make a recipe from the kitchen and it uses like a ginger syrup. Yeah. A so rush. a classic gold rush is just bourbon, honey syrup, and lemon. Oh, but I well, love the idea of adding ginger. I think that makes it very holiday festive. And I have to say that I actually drink gold rushes all year round. Yeah. So the idea of adding the ginger feels really great. It makes it more holiday. Yes. Yeah. Um, another drink that I drink all year round, but does feel very holiday ish is a paper plane. I know you turned I me on to that paper plane. They are so good. So good. Yes. So good. We have shared a recipe with our listeners community. We sure did. On that uh, same vein, we actually shared a res another recipe with our listeners community called a mistletoe kiss from a cocktail book called Very Merry Cocktails, which is yes. a ton of holiday ideas. If you need even more, we both have copies and we would highly recommend it. Anyways, a mistletoe kiss feels like somewhere between a whiskey sour and a paper plane and it is an egg white cocktail so it looks very festive as well okay last opportunity to shout out alcoholic drinks and then i think we should talk about just like festive non-alcoholic could be for kids could be for your sober guests ideas i think we covered them all we Did talked we, about i don't feel like we talked about mold i mean you mentioned mold oh, cider yes i guess what? we mentioned it but i'm just gonna then say mic drop I have the best mold wine recipe in the world and we're going to link to it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. Okay. Hot cocoa, warm flavored milk. Um, old school, like church basement punch where it's like Sprite <laughs> <laughs> and sherbet. Uh, oh, I, that I, is old school. <laughs> yes. Or doing the thing where you like have cranberry juice cocktail and Sprite and you maybe make the ice flow of like cranberries and oranges. Uh, that can be non-alcoholic and be really fun. Last Christmas, Emmett and I made something with cranberry juice, Sprite, and the prism powder from Fancy Sprinkles. And the kids were really into that, which is basically a, a kind of like a Shirley Temple, but with a cranberry vibe instead. Yeah, I love that. Which Shirley Temples, remember when in uh, like deep in COVID pandemic quarantine, the Shirley Temple King was a thing that we were all excited about? Was yes. that, am I remembering that in a weird no, way? The Shirley Temple King? Shirley Temple King. It's like this kid in New York or New Jersey who was going around like taste testing all the Shirley Temples trying to find the best one. <laughs> So maybe no, it wasn't didn't. during quarantine How because he I wouldn't have been this? out. I don't know. He's so cute. Okay. We're I'm finding him right link, now. Yes. We'll link to it in show notes. Okay. Um, okay. Anything else you want to shout out? What would Isaac think is cool? Isaac really drink? does love mocktails. So Isaac loves Japanese food. Okay. And his favorite thing is like getting a mocktail at a Japanese restaurant because sometimes it has like fancy things like shiso or yuzu you know what i mean like that kind of stuff gets him excited otherwise he just does like a shirley temple or soda yeah but that like you saying japanese made me think well what about things like boba yeah or some of those really fun sodas that you can get at like the japanese and chinese markets that is that would really be really cool or yes. i when i was in middle school jones soda was like at their peak of popularity do you remember they have like yeah sour totally. apple flavor yeah, and like totally. that would and like old cars on their label yes it's all like like pre-instagram submitted photos yeah and had an instagram vibe to it it would be fun to do a bunch of old school sodas too on on the bar and have like classic root beers and cream sodas. That would be fun for grownups and kids. I think that the thing about kids is just, you know, taking what they already love and making it special again yeah. with a rim. And it's actually not that different than what we were talking about with grownups, <laughs> like with the margaritas or keeping the bar simple, but then having a special rimming sugar, prism powder, sprinkles 
you know, jazzing up hot cocoa. You could do a rimming powder with crushed peppermint candies or candy canes. You know, like we're saying, Roy Rogers, Shirley Temples, put it all in a big bowl with a couple scoops of sherbet. <laughs> And then and call it a and day. Call it, a call day. it festive. I was gonna be like, you can get juice boxes and cocktail umbrellas, and everybody's gonna be excited. Seriously. <laughs> so I think it's just about you know not trying to go all out like searching the internet for that yeah. perfect thing. Just make whatever they like fun already by yes. adding a little something extra that you don't normally have during the yes. rest of the year. Oh my gosh. That is like a universal rule for like, that is a, didn't I just feed you a rule? Think about what they already like and just make it fun. Totally. Well, Megan, you know, who else is going to have, we have our rules, but so do our community. They have their rules and experiences and tips and tricks. And we want to hear all of them. What cocktails and mocktails are you going to be shaking up this holiday season? Let us know what you're drinking by joining our community or finding us on Instagram or DMing us or emailing, however you want to find us. We want to hear from you. And if you love hearing from us too, sign up for our newsletter. We promise to only email you twice a week, once to tell you when a new episode is published and another to share a must have tip or product pick of the week. Find the link to sign up on our site or in our Instagram bio. And last but never least, don't forget to subscribe to Didn't I Just Feed You wherever you get your podcasts. If you have a minute, leave a rating and review. I can think of a no better holiday gift for us. <laughs> <laughs> Huge thank you to our editor, Samantha Gatsik. I'm Stacy, And I'm Megan. Stay sane and well-fed until next week. Be sure to subscribe to Didn't I Just Feed You wherever you're listening. And don't forget to rate and review.